Right, this uh, this job had a lot of issues with it, um, and I did get a recall on it. Uh, I haven't actually been back yet to do the final bit, so I don't know if it's fixed and diagnosed correctly, but this is the first part. There'll be another uh, two bits to this. Right, okay, so I'm here today. So there's a problem with uh, her towel rails getting really hot and her hot water being way too hot. So on arrival, the lady's had this off, but on arrival, she's turned the power on. Everything here is off. Our pump is running and the boiler was firing. I've just turned it off on the knob here. Uh, and we have four two ports on this system. Um, they're labeled, they're probably correct. Um, so this one here is not labeled, but I believe that's gonna be upstairs radiators. This one here is labeled as zone one ground floor. Towel rails and water. So water's on manual. So that'd be the reason why the water's far too hot, more than likely. So we have to find out why someone's put that on manual. Ground floor radiators is completely open for some reason. So that seems like it's jammed. And these two appear to be okay so here's the warren center uh, so i'm going to find out now what's causing the boiler to run and it's obviously one of these valves is giving power as you can see that all wired in there uh, and if you look that's all four oranges go in there so therefore the top oh, the top of that That must be the switch drive to the boiler. And it does go into that black cable that runs up. Okay, so the power's off. The multimeter's set to volts. And I'm gonna let's see if I can put this in frame. Turn the power back on. I'm going to find my main neutral in here and I'll use the three port or the two ports to find that so that's the main neutral and then I'm going to check each wire one by one. First wire I'll check is 22 volts so that's okay. Next one's nothing so that's okay. Next one's three volts so that's okay. And the next one it's five volts, so that's also okay. 22, three, three, five. So nothing there should be telling this boiler to run. So maybe we haven't even got a problem with the two port. Let's check the main power coming into this wiring sensor, make sure we haven't got an issue with the multimeter. Uh, there's the live, the neutral, 240. So I'm going to turn the power back off. I'm going to clean this one here back up because it's very short and stubby. Get them all tidied up, put them back in and see what happens. Also grey hanging out here, so we'll clean that up and put that in with the greys. One last other check, I'm going to do it on resistance. So in a two port, the grey wire touches the orange wire 
um, when they're motored over and made. So I'm just going to check this grey to orange. And I have four ohms, so that the valve that that is attached to, just coincidentally that fell out. So the valve that is attached to, the micro switch is made on right now. So that grey there, which coincidentally came out with the oranges, between that grey and the orange, There you go, four ohms. So whatever that gray goes to is causing the boiler to run constantly. So I'll simply follow the wire to find out what one that is. And that is zone one ground floor. So I wanna deal with that first. Okay, so here's one for you new guys. If the uh, actuator cover doesn't have this dimple on it, right there, uh, it's a non-removable head. Now occasionally you will have the wrong cover on a non-removable head valve. So the way you actually tell is as you can see here, we've got one screw and another dimple there. So if it has a screw and a dimple, you can take this head off without water coming out. If it has a screw and a screw, so it'd have four screws because there's uh, screw and a dimple here and a screw and a dimple on the other side. If you add four screws, you can't remove the head off that. If you do, you open a hole up to the system. Um, so always just check that before you do it. So I'm now going to remove that head um, and see if the body is seized or if it can be freed up. It'll probably just need a synchro motor and freeing up, so we will see. Okay, so I've taken the head off. And if you look in there, the paddle is on the micro switch. Uh, so with the head off, it is still in the fully open position um, with that paddle stuck. So let me see if I can get you a shot here of me freeing it off. There you go, it freed off fine by itself. Um, once it had a little bit of uh, pressure applied to it. So that is a good indication that the synchro motor is faulty uh, and jammed. Okay, so this is the valve in question, the body. And uh, to free it off, I simply use a little back spanner. Get on there and check it moves freely. And this one moves lovely and free. So I should be able to do that with my finger. Remember that's the sort of litmus test I use. And I can turn that with my finger without any problems. So it's not the valve. It is just the uh, actuator. And within that actuator, it's probably just the synchron motor. So I'm going to take the synchron motor out now and see if the actuator moves freely um, with the synchron motor removed. Okay, so to remove this synchro motor, you just simply undo this little tiny screw here, uh, and then it turns out of here. It's, there's, it's underneath a the tab there. It turns out of there. It's a tiny little screw. And then you simply turn the synchro motor slightly, wiggle it and up it comes. And there's a good indication, the synchro motor's failed, all the grease has leaked out of it um, because it's basically got too hot and jammed. So if you ever take a synchro motor out and it looks like that, it's definitely that that's failed. So I've just cut that synchro motor out. With synchro motors, it doesn't matter which way round the wires go. Um, that moves lovely and freely.
hard bit. Try and get this little bit of screw in without dropping it. We're moving very well. So that's done. Now if we come back over here. Just back on resistance. Let's see if I can keep it like that for you guys. OL. Oh well. Now if we go between the oranges and that grey now, it should stay OL. Oh well. And it has, okay. So that mic switch, that valve being stuck was causing the boiler to run constantly. I'm going to put that grey back where it belongs and then I'm going to investigate what's going on with the water valve because for some reason someone has put that on manual, which isn't very good on an unvented cylinder. Not very good at all. Okay, so I'm going to <coughs> turn the power back on. Program's back on and the pump is not running. So that was it was that valve there causing the boiler and the pump to run. Obviously the boiler's still on off here on the front, but I can turn that on now and it shouldn't run. So that's good. So that's what that was causing the uh, the boiler to run. And now we're gonna find out what's going on with the hot water. Because the reason it was red hot is because the valve's been wedged on manual. This valve is pretty jammed up. It does move a little bit, but look. I'm on, oh, it's back on manual. I'm not sure it's moving back freely. So again, we've got the dimple. I'm going to take the head off and see what's going on inside. Okay, so there's nowhere near the micro switch.
So I reckon the problem with this valve, if we look in here, so this lever here that you're meant to use to uh, open and close it, it'll be peaking there. Can you see how bent it is touching the spring? So if that was pushed any further, yeah, see it just doesn't want to go. So I'm going to straighten that up. Uh, then I'm going to check if this one's getting power to motor on and off. Because someone may have put it on the latch because it wasn't getting power and they didn't know how to get into this wire and centre and work out what's going on. So I'm going to do that next. Again, we check this. Pretty free. Little squirt. I'm not putting any force on this, by the way, just gently moving it up and down to the stops. That one turns just as easy as the last one now. So it's not that. Okay, a little tip on how to get these on. Push it all the way open and then while putting pressure on it, it will just pop back on. Okay, so let's see what happens now. This is all back together over here. I'm going to turn the water on on the timer. Okay, water's on on the timer. And it is motoring over, and it just clicked. And there you go. Everything's working. Turn it off. You hear the valve motor back. So. Click that on. Around here is where I looked. You can see the arms moving. Clicks the wipe switch. And here everything click on. So there we go. We're all fixed. Right, so basically now I'm gonna let this run. It is lit in there, you just can't see because of the flash. Hold on. No, you can't see because the flash is on, but the boiler is lit and running. Um, Everything's closed, I've just got the hot water on. I'm now going to make sure that none of these valves are letting by. Provided none of them are letting by, I'll turn them all on and off one by one, make sure they open and close fine, and then make sure they're not letting by again. Um, but first thing I'm going to do is put that cover back on the electrics. So that was it. Um, I've done them final tests, and the valves didn't let by, and the boiler turned on and off as it should. Uh, so I left. Um, but the very next day I got a phone call from the customer to say there was a problem.